Brazil. So again, as we're seeing so often, Taekwondo running in the blood, and again, once again, that respect between the two fighters before they get down to war. Well, both players know how, how hard they've all prepared, how much this means to each other, and straight away Ramos is on the attack. Manages to pick up a nice right leg to the body. Ramos in the blue is ahead within the first 10 seconds of the contest and and I wonder if there's some blood in the face there of Marcio Ferreira. I think it might have been an unintentional clash. It certainly wasn't a, a kick. Ah, the clash of heads. And a nice show of respect between the two redoubtable warriors. So back to the action. Some uh, fairly vociferous lobbying from uh, from the Spaniard, lobbying directed in the uh, general vicinity of the four chair judges, the uh, the corner judges, but all of them unmoved. Well, Juan Antonio Ramos is a, a master at bringing the referees round to his way of thinking, managing to encourage half point deductions as an opponent. You'll notice he always looks at the referee as soon as they're in the clinch. Protesting his own innocence and, and trying to curry favour, which is part of the reason he does so well. Attempted skip and turn and kick there. The match shouldn't be slipping now. I think they've been, according to the feedback from most of the players so far, they've been pretty good to fight on. And um, just a, a, an error in technique there from, from Ramos. Both players duking it out in the middle of the ring. Overreaching, turning his back on the opponent there, maybe lucky to avoid the wrath of the referee. And as first rounds go, this one's pretty active. Ramos is really taking the match to Marcio Ferreira. And a long standing knee injury. He had surgery on his cruciate ligament on that right knee, so hopefully he should be fit to continue. How long have you been in Beijing? When did you arrive? Last Wednesday afternoon, I think it was. And when you've been here for as long as I am, you will get the Beijing throat. <laughs> we're, we're easily identifiable, those of us who've been here for what feels like 500 years, because we're all going around coughing and spluttering, and just occasionally you lose the ability to speak. And Much to everyone's relief back home. Down the side, lost the ability to speak for about 30 seconds there, so uh, thank you for carrying me through. Welcome back. Oh, fantastic back kick there. Wonderful shift in back kick, and Ramos felt that all the way to the soles of his feet. And we're all square. The Brazilian Marcio Ferreira in the red squares things up against Juan Antonio Ramos of Spain in the blue, who's led for so much of this first round, but doesn't lead at the end of it. It's a point apiece. Decision from a spectator's point of view. Ramos straight away with that wonderfully strong right leg turning kick in close. You'll see it. Great concentration and lovely cover. See with his left hand, he's down there covering. Good work from him and a great back kick. Wonderful. But Ramos, even as strong as he is, he'll have felt that. You can see that in his face. But the determination in the CEO, Ferreira. Ferreira actually winning a world championship silver medal at bantamweight three years ago so he's again one of those fighters who's had to slim down to make the flyweight division here and if you are just tuning into our coverage on interactive four weight divisions and uh, both of them scoring a couple of points at the start of this second round so it's now spain two brazil two yes eight weight divisions has been compressed into four come olympic time Ferreira, the three times Brazilian champion against the great Spaniard Juan Antonio Ramos, who celebrated his 32nd birthday on Monday. A testament to his fighting spirit. He won his first world championship title in 97 and his second in 2007. And a 10 year gap in a taekwondo career is, is massive. Picked up a warning there for falling to the ground. Only time will tell how significant that is. 
I noticed that um, that black armband as well. You were explaining a little earlier why why he's wearing that. Yeah, sadly his, his father passed away before the the last Olympics, and he wears that as a as a tribute to him. And it's you know it's a tribute to his own internal character and his own faith that he he offers up that tribute every time he fights. And that's one of the you know the fascinating things about taekwondo is the the level of faith and strength of character that that each of the athletes have. To the final minutes of the middle round, the second round, Spain to Brazil to Juan Antonio Ramos against Marcio Ferreira, the Brazilian in the red. A good effort there, shifting in real leg tonic kick, but covered by Ramos. Ramos overreached a little bit there. Very fortunate not to concede a point to Marcio Pereira. Very similar height, very similar build. Both fighters, similar range. Which is why they're not want to get engaged too often because it's it's a bruising encounter, especially given that they're now moving through to the latter stages of the competition. The body will begin to feel it. Notice there that. Um Juan Antonio Ramos has actually been told to go all the way to the bottom of those steps because although it's only five steps, you're doing that, um, well, how many times? Once, you know, six, seven times during a contest, 30 steps. Every aspect of competition, if you come in and, and there's something completely new, that can throw you off your rhythm. Oh, Ramos again going for the long double. Just polish and again, <laughs> impassioned pleas to the referee looking for the Kyungo. Look at that Kyungo being the half point deduction. Penalty remains against the name of the Spaniard. Another one, and he'll have a point scrubbed away. And in such a tight contest, that might be significant. Minute and a half to go in the third and final round. Juan Antonio Ramos of Spain in the blue against in the red the Brazilian Marcio Ferreira. Ramos pitching for Spain's first ever Taekwondo gold medal. And really finely poised at this stage. Neither player wanting to make a mistake. And that was a mistake. He just changed stance and left the opportunity for Ramos to come with a right left double. Which puts the Spaniard back ahead with a minute to go in this final round. But crucially, Ramos has that half point deduction, so he'll have to stay active. He has to stay in the game. If he tries to run too much, he'll end up back at two each. And there we go, Ramos's years of experience giving him the opportunity to hobble back to the centre of the ring, but he did encounter the Kyungo. Two each. The referee not falling for it. But fair play for trying. 40 seconds to go, and it's back to two apiece. Good skip in from Marcio Ferreira. He just got his distance just a little bit wrong. A little gamesmanship there from Ramos that didn't go down well with, um, with the centre referee. And feigning injury is one of those things that will cost you a penalty, and it may yet cost... Juan Antonio Ramos a place in the semi-finals we'll see because Marcio Ferreira the Brazilian is back in this and it looks now as if we're heading for four for the fourth round and sudden death I think there will be a kill goal for Marcio Ferreira but maybe not that significant given that there's only six and probably five as soon as the referee starts uh, seconds remain oh she's not started the clock by the looks of things so there's still six seconds remaining no it's only on our monitor it's moving now Ramos going for it. Sudden death. Well, well, well. As we've been saying all day here on Interactive, it's the, the sudden death round. If he starts the way he always does, it'll be a flying start and he'll try and go for an early point. So Gabriel Mercedes watches and waits to see who he'll face in the semi-final. It'll either be the Spaniard in the blue, Juan Antonio Ramos, or the Brazilian in the red, Marcio Ferreira. Ramos, the man who came so close to a bronze medal in Athens, lost the playoff fight 
and has spent the last four years working out how he's going to go at least one better here in Beijing. Here's a great leg from the top Ramos. He has. he has, yes. Wonderful stuff from Juan Antonio Ramos, richly deserved. In saying that, both fighters did compete really well, but there, it was a clear point. I know Marcio Ferreira will claim that he managed to cover it with his arm. Point of view. Because if Perez wins that, then Mike Harvey is back in the frame. But as we saw, a very, very emotional victory for Juan Antonio Ramos. He's into the semi-finals. We're about to have um, a little bit of a break. And then we will be uh, back with...